Hey guys, Dave and Todd here, and there's been a great debate between both amateurs and professionals of what happens when you vertically coil refrigerant lines behind a mini split. Does that trap the oil, pull the oil in the line such that when the unit starts up, there's not enough oil, or maybe even when the unit's running, the oil's trapped there, and that's an issue. And so we put sight glasses into the line set at the lowest points, and we're going to see what happens. All right, Todd, any predictions here? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, Todd uh, knows what's happened, what's going to happen, because we already did this last night. But um, we assume that's probably going to be the same thing as uh, what's about to happen. But let's find out. So uh, turn the unit on. OK, it's on. And there goes the refrigerant. See that foaming? That's actually the oil is foaming. So that's on the low pressure line. And then it's hard to tell direction, but this is the liquid line. So you'll see liquid coming through here. Again, that foam is the oil. And the, and the liquid is going, it's hard to tell, but it's going this direction toward our expansion device, also known as our indoor unit. And you still see a little bit of liquid is that oil or is that? It's liquid in oil mix. They're still in the return line, low su in the suction line. There's still a little bit of oil and still a little bit of liquid. Most of the liquid has been evaporated in the indoor unit here uh, and and become a gas. But that's why in the outdoor unit here you have uh, what's the thing Todd called Todd that traps the traps the liquid refrigerant. Accumulator. The accumulator. The accumulator, that's why the outdoor unit has an accumulator because if you do have any liquid, and, and you see here, very little liquid, still a little bit, but some of that's oil. But if you have any liquid coming back to the outdoor unit, that's why you have an accumulator because you can't have liquid refrigerant going through the compressor. So, but this is how things look right now. And it's going to stay looking this way as long as the unit is running. The, the high pressure liquid refrigerant, most liquid, or all liquid, is going this way. And then going this way is the gas with a little bit of liquid and, and oil mixed in. All right, so now we're going to turn it off. Turn it off, Todd, and see what uh, happens. I'll stay on the sight glasses here. So the liquid is boiling off. And you see it foams up. It's like a car windshield when it's cold outside or whatever. Because um, this line right here, the, the expansion device is already in the in the uh, in the outdoor unit, but then there's uh, further expansion that goes on in the indoor unit. Okay, so it's settling down here. And so this is the high pressure line. So this is the one going to the to the indoor unit. Mm -hmm. And there's some oil in there. A little bit. And it's a tiny bit in there. And there's in the suction line, which is the one going to the compressor. It's probably pretty darn hard to tell. But I mean this is a pretty whatever. This is a pretty deep well here. And it's it's enough to coat the bottom, but you know there's more a little bit more in the in the uh, high pressure line. That's because there's more refrigerant going through there, right? There's more pressure in there, so it kind of makes sense that when things settle down, there's more oil. And um, and so how much oil is this? So we took these two, these are sort of the settlement points, the low points, and so we, uh, Todd replicated this with six lines instead of the four coils we have here. 
All right, and so this is how much refrig. Sorry, this is how much oil. Ten ounces is in this system. In the There's compressor. in the in you know in the compressor. So the compressor only needs two or three ounces to run actually. And there's ten ounces in the system. So it's over filled with oil because if you ever need to add oil in the future, this helps compensate that for that. And also if there's super long refrigerant line runs, this helps compensate because there is some oil in here, right? So so it's not you can't say in terms of MythBusters that there is no oil there is oil in here, but from six lines, six of six of these is right there. There are six sets of these. There's only this much oil, which looks like this is a 16.9 ounce bottle, and there's probably ounce and a half. You think that's an ounce and a half? Yeah. That is not. I've done some shots in my day, Todd, and that does. <laughs> that looks like maybe it's an ounce. We'll call it an out. So there is there is refrigerant in this loop, oil. okay? Uh, sorry, there is oil in this loop, but it's minuscule. minuscule compared to what's in the compressor. And that's the compressor has a sump, so it's built to maintain the oil in the sump. But some does. You want some oil traveling, obviously, through the system because things need to be lubricated, reversing valves, other things. What else needs? Expansion valve. Expansion valves. Any, any moving part in the refrigerant system gets lubricated by this oil, and it's good for it. Right. So oil in the system is good. Good. A little bit does get trapped here. If you, had a, if you had this outdoor unit on the roof, and you have a real long line set, real long run, and then you're doing several coils, you could be kind of more cruising for a bruising, but if you nor have your normal setup where you're outdoor unit is below your indoor unit, you're going to be fine, all right? Even with this this amount of oil in here is... That little bit of oil that gets trapped in there won't affect it at all. Okay, so that's Todd's conclusion from 45 years in the business. How old are you? Enough, enough years in the business. 30. 30-some, whatever. He's been doing this a long time. So now let's... Now we're going to push pause one more time, and we're going to remember... This was when the unit was running. You might say, oh, that's all great when it's running in cooling mode. What happens when it runs in heating mode? So we'll push pause one more time and we'll show you what happens. All right, now it's in heating mode again. Now, now that we had a little reverse in direction, it's probably pretty hard to tell, but now our liquid line is going back to this becomes the expansion device, the outdoor unit here. And everything is just in reverse. The same lines are still high pressure and low pressure, but they've just been reversed. Get liquid in this one. Okay, uh, uh, turn it off, Todd. And when things settle down here, again, some of that actual refrigerant needs to boil off, but when things settle down here, overnight this was less too, but which is important because that's, that's um, you know, if you're, if you're going to be starting out your unit after a few hours or something you're hoping that there's less in the lines and the low points of the lines here but there is oil in here not much and in the suction line i'm not really seeing any here after it's been in heating mode but so that's sort of the conclusion it, both parties right both people are right there is oil that does get trapped in here but the, the units, the designers, of course, they design accordingly because they know that this is a potential issue, so they put more oil in there than necessary. So yep. anything else, Todd, to say about all this? Uh, 
you're probably wondering why the refrigerant was boiling with no heat being applied to it because it's considered a volatile gas which means it boils at or below room temperature so it'll boil all by itself just being in the room all right so hopefully hopefully y'all got something out of this uh, if so give it a thumbs up uh, we talk about air conditioning we talk about solar we talk about solar air conditioning here at our channel which is appropriately enough called air spool because that's the name of our company so subscribe if you have an interest give a comment thumbs up etc thanks thanks a lot for your time